Big bus, big bus, big bus, big bus. But I'm skinnier. I'm not skin. <laughs> this has not been a great start. I'm behind a BMW X5 that is just chucking out black smoke like you wouldn't believe. I'm not skinnier. My bike's skinnier because I've whipped off the panniers. Should we start that again? Good afternoon. YouTube! Island Biker here and uh, I am out for a spin on Bank Holiday Weekend. I think my last video was Bank Holiday Weekend. I can't remember. Anyway, uh, out for a spin on Bank Holiday Weekend because I have just done a whole lot of stuff to the FJR and today's kind of a special day. Check back in after the intro and I'll tell you why. See you in a sec. So why is today a special day? Because I have been doing this for a year now. One whole year I have been motovlogging on purpose. Not just strapping a camera to my helmet just to record what happens, but actually doing the being of a motovlogger. In no way does that make sense from a grammatical point of view. Anywho, so yeah, that's kind of cool. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But first, I want to talk about what I've done to my FJR because I'm out for a ride in a minute and she feels absolutely delightful. You remember my last video, I said I had a problem with a vibrating terminal coming off the battery. It caused me some issues. As you know, I brought her back to the island. I've had all the fairing off. I've gone through front to back and tightened and talked everything. I have properly set up the suspension, front and rear, uh, sag, rebound, etc. Uh, because I've had the bike nearly two years and it's not something I've ever done. I don't know why. I always thought it was a bit soft. And it has a uh, Nitron shock in the back, so it doesn't have the stock FJR. For those who've got FJRs and you have got the hard and soft settings, that's all been ripped out. It's got a, a Nitron shock in it, which is kind of cool. She's feeling absolutely gorgeous, much more planted, a bit more stable in the corners. I did a bit of painting. <laughs> uh, you can't see it. I'll try and post a picture of it later, but I've got two little covers right behind the handlebars just here. And they're fit, well, they're fitted onto the handlebars and they cover up the adjustment bolts. Uh, but the, the problem is before I started using that neoprene key fob I've got, I'll show you that if I can, it just might be a picture. My lock key would just smash around uh, and they just caused those little things to rust. So I've sanded them back a little bit, smashed some hammerite on them because hammerite fixes everything, that black gaffer tape can't. And generally took a bit of time to try and get months and months worth of dirt, a winter's full of dirt and salt and crud and god knows what else all off the underside and up their fairings on the inside of the fairings and stuff so yeah feeling really happy with her at the minute and then i uh, finished that with a 
uh, a treatment of ACF 50. And uh, she's looking all the better for it. As to why she's skinnier, I took the panniers off and I'm just going to run it for a little while without the panniers. I really like the look. It's a bit different to some sports tours. Some sports tours, I think, if you take the panniers off, let's say an ST1300 Pan European, it looks like there's something missing. Whereas on the uh, FJR, I still think it just looks like a, a big sit upright sports bike. You know, it's still got the lines there. The, the panniers aren't integral to the look of the bike. So I thought I'd run it without them. I've got this one on the island for a little while, so there's no real need for me to have my panniers. I've just chucked my top box on for all the camera equipment to show need. You know, now that I've been vlogging for a year. <laughs> oh, I'm so chuffed I kept it up this long. <laughs> so all in all, she's looking pretty tidy. She's feeling pretty tidy. Uh, and I'm very happy, very excited with my FGR at the minute. So about the whole vlogging for a year thing i thought about how i could incorporate that into a vlog you know a one year vlog a best of something along those lines and actually i think it would be appropriate for me to pay homage to the vloggers that i watched before i did the vlogging that inspired me to properly strap some cameras to my bike and put a little piece of me on the tinterwebs and it's not like a top five vloggers or anything like that there's a few select names that i was watching and really into the list is endless there's so many since i've started vlogging i have become aware of so many other vloggers so first on my list which by no means has a number or an order. I guess the order would be chronological, if anything. So the first moto vlogger that I was watching with great passion and interest uh, is Two Wheel Obsession, Brian Glynn. Uh, he's a Florida-based vlogger. Almost doesn't seem to do him justice, to be honest, because whilst he does that, he does some amazing uh, tutorials on uh, home mechanics for the bikes and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and, I, and I watched him, I discovered him when I first bought this FJR 1300 because I wanted to know as much as I could about the bike. And uh, if you type in how to FJR 1300 anything, two wheel obsession will come to the top of that list somewhere. And it was watching uh, his trips all over, uh, I think it was Georgia when he was doing the Tale of the Dragon. Um, and he did a couple of videos about a, a, a stay he did with a group of other bikers up there and he rode all the roads in that area and it was just amazing. Uh, and he had a pretty simple setup as well at the time. Uh, basically what I'm using now, which is a, a GoPro Hero with a GP10 in the center. And uh, that's, the set, you know, that's the setup I went for and that's what I'm still using now. I really enjoyed the, the format of the videos. Uh, I think he's quite a, a quick-witted chap. Uh, he comes across well in his videos and he's really active on all his social media as well so if you like or post a comment you invariably get something in in response uh, and, and i think that adds a lot and, and the guy's got a huge amount of subscribers and yet he, he takes the time to to come back to most of them so that was where i think the, the seed was planted for vlogging so thank you mr glenn appreciate it not sure my wife will agree. Spent some money since then. <laughs> Next on my list, Andy Mancam. Most of you should have must have found Andy Mancam at some stage. Uh, I'm a big fan of Andy Mancam stuff. I think the guy's hilarious, and again, he's really he really feeds back on his social media. Am I going to be here forever? Oh no, go. Cool. He really feeds back on his social media. Uh, he engages, uh, it, it, you know, it's good to see. He does amazing videos in and around Germany, where he lives. Uh, he does lots of tours. He's done uh, a Croatia tour, a couple of European tours, stuff around the Alps. Uh, and it's, uh, it's just a really good channel to watch. And he does some um, really clever garage stuff. And his edits are great. His edits are really good, especially when he goes from 
you know, if you've got three or four bolts to undo on something, he'll cut to them in, uh, in a really slick way. And I think it's those little details that add to the overall uh, enjoyment of the viewer. You know, slick transitions, just thinking about the video. And that's what I tried to do. I still have a heck of a lot to learn. But yeah, definitely go and check out Mr. Andy Mancam. To be honest, if you're following me, you've definitely heard of Andy Mancam. I'm sure of it. I met him once. Very, very lovely chap. It's hard to watch Andy Mancam and not be introduced in some way, whether it's a suggested video or what, through YouTube, the likeable rider. Huge, huge amount of respect for the likeable rider. Uh, again, he's a German-based British vlogger like Andy Mancam. Again, he has an equally dry, witted approach to his vlogs, which are just a delight to watch. And again, he does product reviews and all that kind of stuff. Um, he rides an absolute beast of a KTM and uh, he does amazing tours through Europe, through all the passes in the Alps and, and all that kind of good stuff. So yeah, quite addictive uh, watching him do his videos. Um, eagerly awaiting a track day he's got this year. He's going to do a video on that. Saw him take his, um, his KTM around the Nuremberg ring, which he vlogged the whole way around. <laughs> Um, so yeah, you should definitely check that out and definitely check out the likeable rider. So those are the three that I've, I've been really following closely. And there are a number of other big time vloggers out there that have been doing this for years. So there's a couple more to talk about that I would like to mention. Uh, and I'll do that once I get the other side of Newport. Is it just me, or does anybody else try to get a snapshot of themselves in a shop window? <laughs> yeah, it's probably just me. I haven't told you where I'm heading. It's partly because I don't really know. I just wanted to go out and ride, so this happened. So the couple I'm following very closely at the minute are a US vlogger by the name of 40 Times Around or rather that's his channel name, his name's Tim Collins. And uh, he does really cool videos all about motorcycle, travel, camping and adventure. Uh, watch his intro, because he says that. And uh, he's just started an amazing journey, which a little bit bewilders me and a little bit terrifies me. It's basically an open-ended trip. I think his plan is to go and hit as many of the uh, national parks as he can in the States, but there's no end date. He has literally got on it and he's going to run his business and everything else from the bike on the road. And, and I just think that is an incredibly bold thing to do. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to following that uh, and seeing what he gets up to. I mean, that's something else, isn't it? Just to up sticks and says, this is what I'm doing now. So yeah, good on him. Go check him out. It's, uh, he does some really cool, very informative videos. Uh, the other one who I seek daily inspiration from is Amanda Zido over at As The Magpie Flies. And I'm going to get round this roundabout and I'll tell you why I like what she does. She is, uh, she's a pretty good sized channel. Um, she does some amazing content, some amazing journeys. Uh, real interesting spin on vlogging uh, and how she does it. What I really like about her channel and uh, her approach to moto vlogging is she really supports good up and coming moto vloggers. So she has a, a Facebook page called Up and Coming Moto Vloggers, uh, which you can go and post your stuff on. She does feature channel of the week. Um, she engages with the other vloggers on there. And it's, it's just great. I love these people that kind of look back. You know, they've, they've got a good amount of subscribers. They're doing well, their channel's growing. Uh, and they look back at uh, some of us smaller channels, um, which will eventually, hopefully, keep at it, will become a bit larger. And then we'll be inspired to go and do the same and support those smaller channels. So she gives a lot back, I think, to the uh, motovlogging community. 
uh, and that's great to see. So definitely check her out. Because I am one of millions. I swear it feels like that sometimes. That was just my thoughts. Um, I'll leave all their links down below because, as I say, um, the first three I mentioned are the reason I got into this. The last two I mentioned are the reason really I'm still doing this. Go, go give them your support. If there's one thing I've learned about the moto vlogging community, uh, is you, you have to support each other. You know, good comments, good feedback on videos, and I get that a lot from other channels that I follow. Uh, and I could the list as long as my arm. Check out who I subscribe to, and you'll get a feel for that. Uh, people like uh, Motor Rev. I'm doing some stuff with him in the future. Uh, Hippodrones, uh, he's a right giggle, the guy's a maniac, um, but does some funny videos. Um, so yeah, if, if you're just starting out, there's tons of inspiration to pull on. Uh, and if you've been going a while, don't forget us little guys. <laughs> Gosh. Anyway, I'm going to dash, because I'm on Middle Road, and Middle Road is kind of a cool road for bikes on the island clues in the name, kind of goes through the middle of the island. Check out this map. Right, I'm going to go and enjoy the rest of this road, uh, but thanks for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed the video. As I say, it's a big day for me. I wanted to come out and do something. Uh, and I think it was appropriate that I pay some kind of humble homage to those that started me off into motor vlogging and those that keep me going. So thanks to you guys. Thanks to all the subscribers that I've built up so far. Um, if you're new to the channel, uh, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the little bell next to it so you get an indication of when I upload something. I'm pretty active on Instagram as well. So go ahead and follow me on that. Why not? If you've already hit... Ooh! Steam! Sorry. If, <laughs> if you've already hit the subscribe button, you might as well nip over to Instagram. You're looking at your phone anyway. And just give me a little follow. Ooh! And I tell you what, if you give me a subscribe and you send me an address, PM me, I'll throw you over a couple of stickers because I've got new stickers and I've got one on my FJR. Man, she looks good. Right, on that note, thanks for, thanks for stopping by and I'll catch you guys later. Toodaloo! Everybody. I'm in Lemington. Welcome to Devon. We're in Gravelly. Oh, toodaloo. Bye bye. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye. Bye. Choosy. Bye. Cheers. Bye bye.